in life as in nature, the power of many is a force to be reckoned with. Working together, blocking the exits, upping the pressure, trying to reduce the odds of escape. They can see the target, but in this stakeout, they aren't the only gang at work. This youngster has heavy duty protection. With group defense this good, group attack has met its match for the time being. Beating the odds as a group depends on teamwork, timing, and coordination. In the gang, everyone has their job, and every job matters. In a meerkat gang, doing your spell of sentry duty is taken very seriously. Meerkats like to stick together. Colonies may be up to 40 strong, and their success comes from individuals depending on each other. Youngsters need to be shown where to find food and instructed on the different tasks expected of an adult meerkat, like hunting and babysitting. The kits must learn what is dangerous and what isn't. Sentries use specific sounds for different predators, so once the call for a martial eagle goes out, everyone knows what they're up against. If it gets too close, the whole colony will have to take cover. With as many as 80,000 workers in a colony of honeybees, success comes from good organization. Worker bees graduate through different jobs according to their age. From cleaning, to feeding larvae, to building, the apprenticeship leads eventually to foraging. When a forager bee has found a rich source of nectar, it has several ways of letting the others know about it. He can communicate through scent, buzzing, and dancing. The movements of the dance spell out how much nectar there is and exactly how the other foragers can use the position of the sun to find their own way to it. Because they're working as a gang, one worker's success can easily be replicated. Working well as a team is especially important where surroundings are harsh. Down where the mole rats live, food is not plentiful. 
also life must be well organized. With so many mouths to feed, cooperation is vital. They must get enough team members down enough tunnels to maximize their chances of finding food. And as they can only dig when the ground is soft, the mole rats must make a concerted effort in the wet season to gather the tubers the colony will need for the year ahead. When it comes to catching a big prize, few gangs can match a pack of African wild dogs for lethal efficiency. Working together, these adults can pull down animals eight times a single dog's weight. The first step is to select a victim. A combined force of five dogs can move the wildebeest herd around, sizing them up, looking for any individuals that appear vulnerable. The dogs can keep up this pace for five kilometers or more. Step two, isolate the target and cut it off from the safety of the herd. Step three, the combined assault, keeping out of range of the horns. Five sets of teeth, biting, wounding. Going for the weak spots. Gang one, victim nil. When you've got something worth protecting, it's best to keep it in a safe place. A queen termite is potentially an enormous prize. So the worker termites must be alert for intruders. But these army ants come heavily equipped. right tactics and teamwork, even the best defenses can be got around. Once they've reached the innermost level, the raiders can break through the last layer of protection. But getting to the prize is only part of the job. The intruders must think ahead and make sure they keep a way open back through the defenses. That way, the marauders' combined efforts will be enough to pull off the raid and carry off the queen termite, a gigantic source of protein. It takes some doing, but when a gang gets it right, the rewards can be considerable. The 
the larger something is, the more challenges it poses. Especially when it turns into something that's hard to move and going nowhere. Weaver ants are extremely resourceful. But working alone, an individual can only do so much. On the face of it, the scale of the problem looks insurmountable. But where there is a group, with plenty of determination. Lots of application. And the power of mass action. it can all add up to make enough energy to get some momentum going. Once the inertia is overcome, The collective effort of the ants is enough to get their enormous prey moving all the way back home. The weaver ant's nest is also the result of intensive cooperation. Huge sections of leaf are pulled over and held in position. The ants then stick them in place using a gluey silk obtained by squeezing their own larvae. It's civil engineering ant style, and it's very effective. It's proof of what a gang can do when it gets its act together. Some animals have found that rather than be absolute master of your own little patch, it is far more rewarding to be a small part of something much bigger. These are social spiders, and unusually they have overcome their differences to enjoy the benefits of gang living. Prey that might have escaped from one spider won't get the chance against many. When the web snares really outsize food, spiders can use the web as a sounding board to summon reinforcements quickly. For the spiders, the effort each individual puts into building and maintaining a really massive web is a long-term investment. Over time, every contributor should find that food becomes more plentiful and more regular. Being part of a gang can be useful in a number of ways. Males in a pack may be more daring. These dwarf shell-dwelling cichlids are all males and they're on the prowl.
they are after the fry of the male emperor cichlid. He's a powerful fish, used to driving off would-be predators. But he's no match for the mob. On their own, the dwarf males are small and ineffective, but with the bravado of the gang behind them, they become aggressive and will raid the nesting sites and eat the young of other cichlid species. Unopposed, the gang will roam from nest to nest, terrorizing the neighborhood. Dwarf males don't grow any bigger, so working as a gang compensates for this, but it also has other advantages. And it's all to do with gaining access to females. The dwarf males are headed for the breeding ground of their rival, a mature male of the same species surrounded by shells full of his females. The female of the species is far smaller and colonizes empty snail shells. So each mature male spends a lot of time checking his shells and trying to build up his harem. Top priority for a mature male is keeping all other males out. But first impressions can be deceptive. This is the moment when the dwarf male's looks come into their own. They are small enough to go where the larger male can't, into the female's shell. And their appearance isn't threatening. They look much more like a female than anything else. It's enough to catch their opponent off guard. It's another success for the gang. They are where they want to be, and the large male is confused, outnumbered, and cuckolded. Working on your own has its limitations. When what you're after is small and elusive, joining forces is the best tactic. Cormorants are generally far larger than their prey but although they can adjust their eyesight to work well underwater, on its own, that's not always enough.
the birds need to limit the fish's options, and working in small groups is a start. It's not perfect. But in open water, having other birds around definitely makes the fish more catchable. can be taken much further though and for great white pelicans it's a way of life. The pelicans commute daily from their protected nesting areas to reach the feeding grounds. Once they get there feeding like everything else is highly synchronized. Net-like bills go down and scoop up the fish. Don't forget the timing. Take your positions all down together. And the more elegant the performance, the better the formation will be, and that means more fish herded into the middle to reward the troop. Crocodiles have a reputation for being powerful, independent and solitary hunters. Normally they would be spread out along this 10 mile stretch of Tanzania's Grumeti River, but occasionally even crocodiles work together. At the end of each wet season, for just a few days, the river is teeming with thousands of small catfish. To a crocodile, they're only bite size, but the sheer number can mean rich pickings are possible, so up to 70 crocodiles will gather. Normally, cramming this many crocodiles together would be guaranteed to lead to fights. But while the catfish are plentiful, the crocodiles must cooperate with each other. The only way they will get to feed is if they can form a living dam to trap the catfish in the shallows. This teamwork has helped the Grumeti crocs become some of the largest in Africa. For a few days at least, feasting takes priority over fighting. The waters of Lake Tanganyika are rich in fish. So spot-necked otters have no problem locating food. Their problem is that the lake waters are so light and clear that food can easily see and avoid them.
Also, there's not much in the way of cover for a hunting otter, so to improve the odds of success, the otters work in pairs. Only by working together will these two have a reasonable chance of taking enough fish for both to survive. However large a predator is, ganging up on prey can still be effective. Every year, humpback whales gather off the coast of Alaska. They come to catch their share of the huge shoals of herring, and they have evolved a way of doing it together. Using air. Once the whales have found a shoal, they dive down 50 feet or so to get underneath it. In order to catch the fish in sufficient numbers, the whales need to herd them together into one tight mass. To do that, the shoal must be surrounded. When the gang are all in position, they force air through their blowholes to start driving the fish together. The herring will not cross the barrier of bubbles, so they get squeezed into a smaller and smaller space and have nowhere to go except up. And once the bubbles reach the surface, the trap is sprung. The whales follow the bubbles and fill their jaws with fish, reaping the rewards of working as a gang. Precious things need to be grouped together under adult protection if they are to be kept safe from a hungry mouth. Ostriches are unusual among birds in that only the dominant pair in a flock will make a nest. It will shelter their eggs and those of other females. The rest of the flock is free to go out foraging as the nesting pair take turns to guard the eggs. Jackals and other ground-based predators will often eat ostrich eggs. But a nest with an angry minder attached is a less attractive prospect. Even after the eggs have hatched, 
the dominant males don't lose interest. They rear the young. Among males, the security of the young is so important that having a creche full of healthy hatchlings is a status symbol. Rival males will even stage display fights where the winner takes over care of the loser's brood. For the young, though, the main thing about having a protector present is that it greatly increases their chance of survival. Security is always a worry, even out on the inhospitable soda lakes of Africa's Great Rift Valley. The adult flamingos have to leave the breeding grounds to feed. They try to gather all the youngsters together out of harm's way. A juvenile fish eagle is on the lookout for a meal. Out on the lake, the chicks are well out of reach for land animals, but for the eagle it's a simple matter to swoop down and pick out a target that cannot escape. But one fatality means the others are safe for the time being. Ibex have to be nimble and sure-footed to survive in their chosen habitat. Here in Israel, there are few animals that can follow them onto the high rock ledges. Up in the Ibex's mountain home, the steepest and most inaccessible spot is the safest place to raise the young. Ibex kids are agile enough not to fall off, so perched on their sliver of rock, all the young can be kept together. What makes this crash even more useful to the adults is that it comes with a childproof exit. Mothers can come and go when they need to feed their young, but the kids are not yet old enough to make the leap to the outside world. There's no way round it. Until they've grown a bit bigger, the youngsters will have to stay out of harm's way. Putting her young out of harm's way is also a priority for the green turtle. She will only be ready to breed every two to three years. 
When the time comes, the female crawls up onto the beach at night and digs out a nest for her clutch of eggs. She'll repeat this process again and again every 10 days or so. With each visit, around 100 eggs will be buried to incubate safely out of reach under the sand. The hatchlings emerge six to eight weeks later. They come out at night, when the beach is free from daytime predators. These are just a few of the several hundred young one female can produce. But the odds against survival are so low that she needs all of them to at least start the outward journey. Out of a thousand hatchlings, maybe one will make it to adulthood. Out in the wild, where danger lurks, sticking together can make the difference between life and death. The safest place to be is in the middle, and it's vitally important not to get separated from the gang. Gangs don't come much bigger than this. It's a colony of free-tailed bats with hundreds of thousands of members. During the day, the bats roost in the safety of the cave, but as dusk approaches, they must get ready to face the dangers outside. The bats have a dilemma. To reach the feeding grounds while there are still plenty of insects, they must leave before dark. But that means they can be spotted by the last of the daytime predators. The red-tailed hawks are waiting for them, so the bats leave the cave in a continuous stream. Running the gauntlet can't be avoided, but as one in a gang of thousands, there is less chance that you will be picked on by the hawks. Although they look fragile, every year monarch butterflies take on the dangers of a thousand mile journey down the length of America. They travel in huge numbers, covering around 80 miles each day and resting in trees by night.
And when they reach Mexico, even though none of them has made the journey before, they settle on the same trees that are used by monarchs year after year. Once they are ready to hibernate, individual butterflies merge with the mass of others nearby. They cluster into giant roosts as a way of staying warm, but also because the intensity of their color and scent intimidates would-be predators. Until the spring, the monarchs will stay here, each one indivisible from the millions around them, waiting to start the northward migration. Being part of the crowd brings greater safety, but it can cause difficulties too. This cormorant is trying to find her chick, but with a colony this size, where do you start? The chick is safe, but it's hungry. The mother may be having problems finding her own chick, But that doesn't mean she's about to feed someone else's hungry offspring. He must be here somewhere. If she can just catch a few notes of his call, At last, reunited with the only one that matters. Sticking with the gang will get you through the dangers eventually. Wherever you may do it, swimming with the shoal, or flying with the flock, there's always safety in numbers. One among many can be impossible to pick out. With enough of you in one place, even the vulnerable may be safe from attack. In a gang, you can be more powerful and less at risk. For some animals, 
Just relying on numbers for safety is not enough. Visual effects taken en masse can be very deceptive. Depending on which way you look at them, a whole lot of stripes can turn into something quite different. Or even nothing at all. It's all a trick of the light. But for a hunter trying to pick out just one from a herd of many, it may make all the difference. Too many lines blending into one another may be enough to turn a hit into a miss. Off the coast of Baja, California, shoals of anchoveta can make life very confusing. The blue sharks work together to try and herd the fish. But it's easy to get disorientated once the anchoveta start twisting and turning. And the way they shimmer is enough to scramble a predator's senses completely. It looks so simple, but when this gang's at work, beware. What you see may not end up being what you get. Gangs work on many different levels. To find enough food, the East African griffin vultures cover an enormous territory. A kill could happen anywhere, so they must spread right out, but still stay within eyesight of each other if they are going to be effective. On the plains below, young killers cooperate to sharpen their skills. The mother cheetah is letting her two cubs learn the ropes on a young wildebeest that's been separated from the herd. Before the kill is even made, a vulture has spotted it. And once one bird goes down, the rest will see it and soon follow. One uninvited guest is nothing for the cheetahs to worry about. But the rest of the vulture gang are on their way. Now there are enough of them to demand a place at the table. The cheetahs can hold their own for a while, but vultures favour slow encirclement. Step by step, control of the kill is slipping away from the cheetahs. They can resist it for a while, 
But in the end, force of numbers will prevail. And the last cheater has to accept that the power of the gang cannot be denied.